Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Here we'll use Riverpod state notifier and state notifier provider to do basic CRUD operation. For example, you'd be able to read all the data available and then you'd be able to add new data. And on click, you can remove any of the data you want and then you can add more. And if you do long press, you'd be able to update data with randomly generated number as you can see. So without further ado, let's get started. Well, here I have this uh, class, which is homepage, and it's a stateless class. And uh, at the top of this class, we we'll declare a new class. This is our new class. The class name is number notifier. And as you can see, it extends state notifier. Well, inside this, it actually takes a type as well. The type is a list. Inside the list, we have string. And uh, this class also has a constructor and we have to initialize value for super constructor. There should be some values. So in our case, we are using string and some random way of naming the strings like number 12, number 13, it could be anything. Well, the first question you might ask, what is state notifier and what is different? Why this is different than state provider? Well, in Riverpod, if you use Riverpod, state provider just simply deals with simple types like, for example, uh, Boolean integer string like that. But if you have more complex type uh, types of objects, for example, a list of strings, a list of maps or list of integers, or even any custom object or even widgets, in that case, you have to use state notifier. So if you use Riverpod, so for simple types, you would be using state provider. More complex type types, you'd be using state notifier. Now, since we initialize the value over here, so this value should be available inside the state or state object. Okay, so now state notifier will hold our state or provider. So what is state or provider here? It's talking about shared data. So our app would be able to share this data as well as update and the widgets that listen to this state or state notifier or provider, they'd be able to get updated automatically. Now anyway, as I said that this data is hold in the provider or state notifier, but we need to expose the data to the underlying classes, the classes or objects or widgets they would be listening to this state notifier and how to do that well there is a mechanism for that so if you use state notifier and to expose the data related to state notifier you have to use another provider from riverpod that's called state notifier provider now this is how it looks like so here is the core uh, provider which is called state notifier provider and it takes whatever the state notifier you create so over here we created a state notifier and we named it number notifier you can name it anything so over here I have to mention the notifier type I mean the notifier itself and the type it takes so it takes list of strings as well as we always have to have this ref object, which is coming from Riverpod directly. And because of this, you'd be able to access many other properties of Riverpod. So anyway, so after this, actually we call the class, as we call it, actually these values get initialized. So over here, since we are using state notifier provider, now these values should be observable from our widgets and we would also be able to modify them, edit them, or delete them. Once again, if you use state notifier, you have to use state notifier provider. Previously, we have seen, if you use state provider, you have to use provider. So they are kind of similar. So now, as we have this section over here right now, so actually in our widget or inside scaffold, we'll be able to use this and access this data and show them on the UI. Now, we have to make some changes over here. So since we are using provider, we don't want to use stateless widget. We want to use a consumer widget. 
and inside this we have to use an object which is called widget ref and we can access the ref object just like this one but this one you can access automatically out of this build method but inside build method if you want to access this you have to have the object first which is called widget ref so now since we have this two mechanism three mechanisms actually so state notified provider consumer widget and ref object so now we'd be able to access this one inside our build method now to be able to access this once again we have to use this ref object and as you can see ref object has a function which is called watch so we would use ref.watch and then our state notifier provider so after this it will return us the object that we'd be able to read and as we have access to this one so this is hold our data so we'd be able to access the strings so now we'll go ahead and access them inside our body now here inside the body we have this column widget now here we have this children now children takes a list of objects or widgets now remember this numbers actually would return us list of objects in this case in our case list of strings so this is already returning us a list of strings so for this reason we are going to remove this curly braces uh, sorry the third braces from here and then we'll access this numbers object and then we'll convert it to a map now we'll access each of the element from here and then we we'll just simply do like this text e and then at the end eventually we'll convert it to list again and the arrow should be gone now this time we're gonna restart our app and as you can see we have this two numbers number 12 number 30 which we have initialized at the very beginning so already because of this state notifier and state notifier provider we can access the shared data and we can show them in a list like this now I'm going to restyle this so that we look better if hot reload doesn't work you have to restart it and then you see it looks better okay we look better now this is the first time we got our object from shared store and then we show it over here next thing we want to do we want to be able to click on this button and randomly generate number and show it right below them so let's go ahead and do that now to be able to do that actually one thing we could do which is very easy so here we can create a method so now we'll go ahead and create a method the method name is add and all it does it takes a number so we have to pass a number to it and then we can access the state object now this state object is available since we are using riverpod so it'll give us all the states related to this app over here so we get all of them all of them this three dots means get all the objects and then add a new one in the list so now we need to find a way to call this definitely we're gonna call this from this button press over here now this should be actually inside over here now here once again we are accessing the ref object so if you want to add new value to your shared state or inside state notifier you have to use ref.read so ref.watch is just for watching and getting all the data and show it on the screen now with ref.read actually you can add new value or remove values so once again so we do ref.read and then we access our provider and since we are going to modify we must access notifier object and on that object we call this add method now this add method is the method that we created early 
So this provider now has access to this add method. Well, of course it has access because it's a method inside this provider. And now inside this, we randomly generate a number. So on button press, this would get called and a new number would be added. So let's restart our app. So we have restarted and no change so far. Now let's go ahead and click on this button. So we see that we have randomly generated number over here. Great. And after that, actually, we want to be able to click on this and remove any of the numbers. Now, to be able to do that, inside this provider, we need to create a new method. And the method name is remove. Once again, it'll take a number. And over here, as you can see, whatever the number is being passed to that, if that's not equal, actually will remove from this state and then we'll have a new updated state. So here is our remove method. And once again, as we click on this, this method should get called. Now here, the condition may look a bit tricky. So all it does is it takes whatever the number you click, it first takes that one. And then if it checks, if the number you have sent and it's currently going through those two numbers, if they're not equal, it'll keep over here inside the state. But if they're equal, actually in that case, this condition returns false. If it returns false, actually it'll remove that number from the state object. Yeah, it may sound a bit tricky. Now we need to find a way to call this one. Where to call it? But this time definitely we're gonna call it from this uh, body section over here. Now, earlier we have seen that we have this map object. Now we wrapped this element over here. So we are going to wrap it around a widget. Uh, the widget would be called gesture detector because we want to remove an item based on button press or on press event. Now inside this we'll have on press event. So here is our event which is called on tap event. Now, as you can see, as we click on this, so first we get the provider and notifier object. And since this refers to actually a class, the class has a method which is called remove. Now we can keep track. Now we can keep track each of the object because of this list over here. And we access them in a map and each of the element are accessed using a loop. So wherever you'd be clicking, it would get the right object and call this remove method. Now let, let's restart everything. And then let's click some random numbers, generate some random numbers. Now click any of them, you'll see it's gone. It's beautiful, isn't it? So we are almost doing the CRUD operation over here. So now we are able to read, create and remove. Next, we want to see how to update certain number. So once again, first we need to create an update method. So we'll go inside this provider class and right below it, we're gonna create a new method which is called update. Now update method would take two values. So the number that's being clicked for update and the updated value. Now first, temporarily we'll create a new list. So the list would hold list of strings. And after that, from our state, state variable, we see how many items we have and we go through in a loop. And then we check if the number that's being clicked and in the loop, the current number, if they match. So for that number, we're going to update the value. Otherwise, we'll keep as it is. And once we update our temporary list, we update the whole state object. So the old values would get replaced by the new one. So this is as simple as that one. But you have to remember, as you update values, you have to get the values in a temporary list. Otherwise, it won't work. So since we are done with the update method, once again, we have to find a way to call it. Now, we're going to call it once again inside from this gesture detector. 
So previously we have used on tap for removing. Now this time we'll use long press for updating. So here we'll invoke on long press method. And as you can see, once again, we access the ref object, then read method and our provider notifier. And then we call our update method. And once again, because we are going to, we are looping through it so we can access each of the element and uh, this is the current value and then with it we just uh, add a new value over here as you can see as a string so let's restart everything and let's add number and then remove one and randomly click on any one to update it now we'd ha we have to do a long press so do a long press and as you can see the value updated you could do long press here you could do long press here even you can add more numbers and then you can delete any of them you want and then you can update any of them you want like that so that's it so that's how you do crowd operation using riverpod thank you